So I just bought this house subject to the existing financing. That means I didn't have to turn in any bank application, didn't use my credit, I didn't turn in any tax returns, neither did the bank even approve me. They don't even care. There is no bank involved in me buying this house. And I want to show you how we do it so you can get out there and possibly deploy this strategy to either buy a house to live in or perhaps buy your next investment strategy. I'm going to take you into the property. We're gonna walk through it because I haven't even walked through it yet. I'm here on site, I'm gonna show you the neighborhood and then we'll go back to the office and go over the numbers and show you, break it down. What does one of these subject to deals look like? Let's do it. All right, class, it's Chris Haskins with the realestateroundup.com. My mission and ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. So today I want to show you what we're doing so I can document the day-to-day -day operations of a real estate investor. If you saw my video last week, I'm not necessarily in the real estate house buying business. I'm in the solving problems for people business, all right? And with that business that we're in, sometimes when you solve a problem, it comes with a nice piece of real estate. So today we're gonna to go inside this house here. We just bought it the other day. I haven't even been inside, of, oh, that's not it. That's it there, nice three bedroom, two full bath property. Look at that nice sunroom those people got right there, that's crazy. So I'm gonna show you the area here. So I like this property, an arrow up for me is gonna be it's on the cul-de-sac, which means I don't want to say zero traffic, but very little traffic. We've got some new construction going on. I don't necessarily like these townhouses right here, but it's okay. New construction there. We've got some land here that looks like they're going to be, whoever's building is coming up here to keep doing these houses. We've got a new car in there. So it looks like there's some activity in this area that I'm not necessarily mad at. So I'm in a part of, I'm in the suburbs of the Hampton Roads, Virginia area this suburb is called franklin county not necessarily the most popping county however what my gut is telling me is that where i live in the chesapeake virginia beach area rents are so high they're going above what the average income is for the area so i believe that i'll show you a map people will be migrating down to this area so they can uh, have more affordable housing so this is a three two i think it's a two and a half I like it because it has an overhang there. As you see, the water isn't coming down, but we do have some rotten wood before I go inside. So the backstory on this one was the poor seller, the homeowner, bought a property, from what I understand, for a family member to move in, and the family member just stopped paying. So this stuff, we're probably going to have to fix this thing too. The family member stopped paying, and you get stuck with a piece of real estate. Happens. Happens to the best of us, right? So it's got a cool little backyard. Windows are in good condition. Let's go in this thing together, y'all. You can see when people leave me, when I say problems, we solve problems, y'all. So when we close this thing, I thought the seller was gonna take out a lot of this stuff, but it looks like she has left a ton of stuff for us to clean up. Now the power's not on, so these freezers probably gonna be full of stuff. I gotta deal with that. I don't know why we didn't get the, we didn't get the ice cream all melted up. Cabinets aren't in bad shape. I'm not even gonna open the refrigerator. So I'm gonna have to hire a team to come clean all this stuff out. Okay, welcome to real estate. So the bathroom is not bad shape. Welcome to real estate, y'all. People are, people are going to leave you problems to fix. It is just part of the business. They're gonna dump all their stuff on you and expect you to deal with it. Let's go upstairs. This carpet's going to have to go. But, so I want you to understand the strategy because this is how I was able to buy a house for my family. Because at the time when I was looking, I couldn't qualify for anything. Oh my Lord. The bedroom is just full of stuff. She got a refrigerator up here too, full of stuff. 
Okay, no food. Thank God, no food in there. What in the world? She just left all this stuff. So what we did at closing was we held back some money because I wanted her to have this thing empty when she moved out. What we got here? R-I-S-T-E. My children have full scholarships. Let me do a zoom on this stuff. My children have full scholarships. I like that. I owe no man. No mama owes somebody. I'm a size 14. Is that good? My house is paid in full. My credit score is 800 or better. I have rental houses. That's a good one to have. Okay. Oh, we got the lottery here. We're going to hit the lottery. What the hit? She's going to send her son to the NFL. I got Jonathan goes to the NFL. What is that? I have my business. So these are some stickies. This stuff actually kind of, this stuff works. Putting stickies up on the wall. This is the bathroom here. Not too bad, just a little dirty in there. This bathroom is in good shape. Y'all can see there, I'll give you a pan. I'm a size 14, is that good or bad? I don't know, is that a, do you wanna be a size 14? I mean, I guess you, maybe that's down what, from what she was, I don't know. Interesting. Interesting uh, perspective there. What we got here? Well, this is a bedroom. Look, look like somebody was doing some hair in there. Another bedroom. They have left. This is probably two dumpsters full. This bathroom looks really good. Open up the iris a little bit for you. Oh, open it up that way. There we go. Okay, bathroom in good shape. Looks pretty good to me. Man, this is in really good condition here. Okay, so I guess we'll uh, nothing else really. Let's go out back. I didn't look out back real quick. Take a look out back. Oh, here's the downstairs little living room here. Damn, this joint is done. Good gracious. I'm not quite sure who was living in here, but this thing all to it. Or this deck is going to have to probably go. I'm not sure if they work either, but we'll find that out shortly. Man, okay, well, is there anything else? This deck is a little scary. I do like that overhang. I'm glad we got an overhang so that water doesn't hit on the back of the door right here. Oh boy. All right, so let's uh, let's get to the office and show you how this thing was put together. Let's go. Okay, so you've seen the house, and before we go over all the numbers of this subject to real estate deal, I need you to understand the definition so you can get it through your mind and get it. I don't know what you need to do to get to break through the glass ceiling that this is legal in all 50 states, including Texas. I guess that's still a state, right? So they do things differently in Texas, I don't know. But get your Barron's Real Estate Guide. You can download, download the guide in the video description. You got to have one of these so you know your definitions, okay? So a subject to mortgage deal is a circumstance in which a buyer takes title to a mortgage piece of real property but is not personally liable for the payment of the amount due. That means they never signed on the dotted line with the lender. <clears throat> the buyer must make, that's us, must make the payments in order to keep the property. However, with defaults, only the buyer's equity in that property is lost. All right, so this is not an assumption. Wayne signing on, signing on the loan, taking over nobody's loan. We're doing nothing but stepping in and making, their, making the loan payments for the seller. All right, so she brought this house, um, presuming like, I hear all the time people buy properties for family members, loved ones, friends, all that stuff, and then they stop making the payment. And when you look at their property, it looks like that they really had no love in there, man. I mean, you got Santa Claus stuff for Christmas. That was how long ago was Christmas? It's crazy. I just cannot imagine the last time they made a payment. It's, well, I guess it was Christmas. We'll look at the, the mortgage statement here in a minute. The last time they made the payment was back in the day. So let's go over these numbers, and I'm going to walk you through this so you, you don't have any shadow of a doubt that you know how this thing works. Because I, I need you to get out there and deploy this stuff. I need my community to stop worrying about 
Well, I gotta get my loan, get my credit right. I gotta save up my money, get my down payment, all that stuff. It just doesn't exist. It only exists in your mind, okay? Buying houses, creative financing using the subject two strategy is how I built my empire. It's how I bought the house that my family lived in recently we moved from, but I wasn't able to do this. I wasn't able to go get a loan. I had to only, the only way I was able to provide housing for my family was through creative real estate. I'm just telling you how it is. So the purchase price on this one was 169,000. And how do we get to that? How do we get to that number? All right, so let's, oh, I'm glad you asked that. Let's put out, pull out our trusty documents here. So the first thing you must have, if you're gonna do any subject to deal, is gonna be the most recent mortgage statement, all right? So let's look here. How did we come up with 169? So you see right here in box number one, and with red, the outstanding principal balance is 112. So I got that, that's total right there. And these are just rough numbers. A deferred balance, I'm presuming that they, they did some type of loan modification back in the day. Who knows what they did? But we'll pull that loan, the full deed of trust later to look at that. But they owe another 50000 on top of the, one tw uh, the 112. And then on top of that, we got 7000 If you look at the bottom down there, we have uh, $7,000 in arrears. Remember, I told you they hadn't made their mortgage payments since almost Christmas. <laughs> right? You can look at this as... As we come up with September. All right. So that's how we come up with our purchase price. So this is our mortgage statement. This is how we get all the information. So we look here. You saw how we came. You saw all the numbers added up there. Now, next is the monthly payment. It's $964. Well, how do we come up with that, Chris? Because it ain't your loan. is isn't loan in somebody else's name. Look at the mortgage statement. The next box over here to the blue, I believe. Now uh, the principles that uh, there that we will be paying is $107. The interest is $360, and the escrow that's taxes and insurance is $486. That all adds up to a regular monthly payment of $964. Now, thank goodness this loan includes PITI. That means principal, interest, taxes. That's real estate taxes and the insurance. Now, no doubt. $486 for taxes and insurance is kind of high. I'm presuming that when, when somebody stops paying the mortgage, the lender, what happens is the mortgage company will go out there and get the most expensive insurance policy they can find because they want to be 100% covered if something happens to the house. So what I'm telling you is we can probably go out and find a cheaper insurance policy that will lower our escrows from 486 almost 500 bucks just for taxes and insurance on this little house is crazy i mean that doesn't make any sense all right so that arrears if you look down here i want you to see every month that's added up and the, the, you'll see delinquency notice you see they didn't make the payment for march april may june july all that stuff just boom, boom, compounding and when we step in remember from my last video you need to go look at it here we are, we're not necessarily in the real estate business, but we're in the solving, we're in the people business. I need to solve your problem. If you're a person, I can solve your problem. So all that stuff adds up, you'll see every month, boom, 964, 964, 964, adds up to there. And we had to bring that into closing, which in a minute I'm gonna go over the HUD. So you'll see this stuff's legal. It even has a line right here on the HUD, government issued document. Okay, the interest rate, for this deal, I don't know about you, when you go out there and buy a house, the current interest rates right now are in between 7 and 8 percent. But for me, when I go buy a property and I buy a subject to, you can look right here. The interest rate right in this box down here is 3.875 percent. Oh my goodness. What is it? Box number one right there. It's right, it says the interest rate 3.875. That's why subject two is so powerful. We are able to go back in time. I don't I can't recall when this loan was originated, but uh, if you stay tuned to the channel, I'll find out for you. We're able to go back in time and, time and seize those low interest rates and then step in and keep making those payments. While most people that are buying houses traditionally, they are at the whim of whatever the Fed interest rate is. Isn't this powerful, y'all? This gives me chills when I think about it because we're able to get these low payments only because of what we know. We know that there is more than one way to go out there and buy a house. We don't have to go qualify for a mortgage to do that. And now you know, okay? All right, next is gonna be, what's our ARV on this one? What's the after repair value? Not that it really makes, it's not a huge deal breaker on this one, but we are stepping into some equity. 
So it's 225,000 is, uh, is what the fixed up value is. And it does need some work, as you saw. Now the rents on this, in this particular area, is gonna be $1,500 a month. So when I see that, when I see this mortgage payment of 964, all in my head, I'm like, hmm, three bedroom, two bathroom. They're like gold. Everybody wants a three, two, especially with a two, a bathroom inside the primary bedroom. That's a primary suite, right? So if you rent it for 1500, your payment's roughly a thousand. We're gonna be getting $500 a month cash flow. And on top of that, you know how we do, we do lease options. So we'll also get a down payment out of somebody. I'm hoping that we'll get roughly 10, we might even get more if I choose to list it on the MLS. So you see the bank statement there, you see how we came up with all of our numbers, you can do this y'all. Now is this legal? So let's look at our HUD here, our HUD one settlement statement. The reason we're still using a HUD and not a closing disclosure is because there's no lender involved. I do not want you to think that the only way you can buy a house is to go into the bank and suck it up and pray and trying to get a loan. All right, so let's look here. Line number 101, that's our purchase price. Remember contract price, 169. All line 103, 104, all those are charges we had to pay for. Now, line 203, it says it right here in the government issued document. Existing loan taking, taken subject to 169. That's gonna be the total amount that we still owe. So we pretty much owe the same thing that we're paying for it. I think we gave the seller three grand at closing. But the kicker is, and I'm gonna let you go. I know you got a lot to do here. I, 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 I get, once again, man, <laughs> you are getting information that is gonna change your life. If you will pay attention to this and deploy and get out there and, and actually put this strategy to work, you will be able to change your zip code wherever you live. You'll be able to buy as many houses as you want to. Look at this. Generally speaking, in line 800, this is gonna be the items payable in connection with the mortgage loan. I want you to look over to the right. Usually this has points, fees, all type of stuff adding up to six, seven, eight, sometimes 13, dollars $14,000. But when you do it the subject two way, this thing is zero. There are no loan fees on here. This is, uh, if you've ever purchased a property, you know this is the area here that you get killed. The lender can apply any type of fees that they want to, a document prep fee, a processing fee, credit report fee, appraisal fee, point fee, origination point, pay down point, all type of fees they can put here and it adds up. But when you do it this way, you got nothing adding up, all right? So I'm so excited to deliver this good information to you, but here's the, dish, here's the deal that makes this all work, the magic. You have to share this with other people so we can get the word out in our community so we can, be, we can create more homeowners. I personally have helped people buy millions of dollars of real estate. I get the emails every day, but I need your help. I've got to get the word out. There's so many fake gurus out there in lawsuits and people taking other people's money. It, it, it helps us to stand out when you say, you know what? This guy right here is the real deal. He has a family man. He treats people with the utmost, utmost respect. He's got integrity and he's sharing the information that he's learned since 2004. That's what I need you to do. Share this stuff with friends and family so we can get the word out about how to create and build financial freedom for our community, right? So subscribe to the channel and like this content. Now, if you, uh, if you need these documents, uh, the subject two documents, how to put all this stuff together, that link's in the video description. I've got a training, my subject two trainings down there. And make sure you're on our email list so you know when I'll have my next subject two lease option workshop. That's where I'm gonna spend hours and hours with you showing how to set this stuff up, okay? Because this is an advanced strategy. You're not going to get this overnight. It took me many, many years to actually learn it let it swirl around, you gotta, you gotta you know, let it sink in a little bit, and then deploy it. it. Took me some time, okay? And it's probably gonna take you some time too. I love you, Roundup. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.